Marcus Conti reporting on a follow following up on a story that uh, I had covered extensively in the past. Jen Moore, Jenny Moore task force murder. Is it a murder? Was it a murder? We we don't know. But today we're going to find out for sure. We're going to find out a lot of details because there is a new suspect, a new primary suspect in this case. Uh, so so just uh, if you're not familiar with who Jenny Moore is, I'll take you back. Jenny Moore. August 13, 2018, about 11 months ago. We're almost at the uh, anniversary, maybe another month away from her, the anniversary of her death. Uh, she was living in a Washington, uh, D.C. hotel room, uh, same hotel as uh, George Webb. She was following the work of George Webb, and I use the word work very uh, loosely. Uh, so she was she was doing this um, kind of investigative work into her focus, which was uh, child abuse, uh, child abuse, uh, Pizzagate, billionaires, you know, raping children, right? Noble work, right? Noble work to explore, right? So, so I had done extensive, uh, you know, research into this, right? I've only gotten involved. I've said it many times. The only reason that I've gotten involved in this particular dumpster fire of individuals, this LARP, this series of LARPers, George Webb, Jason Goodman, possibly task force, definitely true pundit, you know, purveyors of fake news. The reason I have no offense, I have no uh, opinion of the fake news itself. Uh, but, you know, again, it's buyer beware. If you, if you like that sort of thing and you're intrigued by uh, conspiracy theory, that's fine. That's fine with you. When it, when it crosses over the line into someone, a player in the scenario, dies, right? And, and then the allegation is that she was murdered by someone, a high official, for exposing something. Then, then I have to step in and take a look at it, right? Or people are throwing frivolous lawsuits at each other, right? As fi- Jason Goodman is, has three frivolous lawsuits on his back. He's probably suing two people. Everybody's suing each other, right? There's... The, the DNC is suing, uh, su- suing a bunch of people for defamation. So there's lawsuits flying, all these fake, what I, what I consider, maybe they're not fake lawsuits, but they are frivolous in nature. So let's look at, uh, let's f- first look at the background, right? First we'll, we'll look at who, who, who I am in this scenario. I am an investigative reporter at the time. I'm, I'm taking a deep dive into this story. I have no affiliation with any, any of these folks other than occasionally dipping my beak into their social circle to question them, to interview them, to examine their behavior, examine the evidence surrounding them. So starting, these are nine months ago, nine months ago. These are the series of videos. If you search on my channel, Marcus Conti, uh, on YouTube, and you search backward, if you just uh, uh, search, put in George Webb, search my channel for George Webb, Jason Goodman, Jen Moore, you find all these videos that uh, explore um, these characters and how they how they operate. You know, for example, it it was widely believed that Jason Goodman he uses a bunch of sock accounts. One is uh, 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 Casey Whalen. We'll talk more about him in a second. uh, George Webb. Right. So we also had the autopsy uh, of Jen Moore. I was the the lead, and you know, I was the only guy really that took a look at that uh, autopsy. We're going to look at it page by page. We'll go through it. I have it here. It's signed by the uh, coroner's, you know, coroner's office, right? There it is. All right. I have the toxicology report right here. All right. So I know I, I, there's probably nobody around that really knows as much in detail as, as, as I do in this case. So that's why I'm talking about it. So, because there is a there is a new twist to it now. What happened? Uh, what transpired this week is very interesting. That's what we're going to look at. So the case now, it continues, right? There's no there's no uh, statute of limitations on murder. If that's what it is, is it murder? Well, then there is no statute. Is it assault and manslaughter? Maybe seven year uh, uh, statute. We're going to look at the the latter of that, manslaughter. So these are all the videos I interviewed George Webb. I talked about, and, and initially I was, I was, I was uh, bushwhacked by this. I thought that it was true. I believed George Webb's bullshit that 
um, I believe I believe the story that True Pundit was pumping out and George was running with. And we're going to look at all these characters. We're going to examine them in detail. Uh, so I did a bunch of those those um, a bunch of those videos. So you're free to go and look at those. So the the conspiracy continues, right? <clears throat> my allegation was that my my fundamental belief was that Bill Clinton, although I would have loved to see Bill Clinton. Uh, be found responsible for the murder of Jenny Moore. I just couldn't find any evidence that connected those two together. Uh, so, so this idea that somehow I'm trying to interfere, I think that's the conspiracy now that I'm interfering in uh, bringing Bill Clinton to justice uh, and trying to not have the information about Jen Moore uh, released is is beyond ridiculous, really, because I again you can see here's the evidence. I'm trying to find out who killed Jen Moore. Is there a connection to Bill Clinton? If there is, please show me. If she's murdered, well then how come it's you know how come that information isn't uh, available in the in the autopsy? Tell show prove to me that that Bill Clinton. Please prove to me that Bill Clinton killed Jen Moore so that we can go prosecute. We can then go after Bill Clinton, but don't make up a bullshit story and say it just for, for clicks, right? Because they're clickbait artists, and I, I'm going to show you how they do it. Uh, well, you already know how they do it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to emphasize. So you can look through all these videos. Here I, I, did, I talked about the overdose, the, the autopsy and details, a long history. I don't know, 30 videos I did on this subject, trying every way to pull these guys out. So, so the conspiracy continues. Here's, here, here's now yesterday or two days ago. Here's Jason Goodman, suspect number one. I'm going to call him suspect number one in what I believe to be an assault that ultimately becomes a manslaughter. And, and his, his co-partner here, his co-conspirator, the, 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 um, the, the place where the story really started with the allegation that he had video of a boy who was raped by Bill Clinton. And he's been parading the story around for a year now they're trying to cash in on the story. I have not seen this video. He's, he, they, they published it behind the money wall. I'm not going to give him two cents. I'm not going to give him... You know what? Maybe I will. Here, I'll give... Uh, Jason, here's $2. Here's your fucking $2. Here's, your, here's $2 for you, right? In, in real life, right? I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. I can't control myself. So, so in real life, when you publish... Uh, uh, information like that. When you publish information like that, that is is uh, in the public interest, you don't put it behind a fucking money wall. You publish the information where people can see it. You put it out into the public. So again, it's a it's just a money sham, right? The reviews that I've seen, people say the the face is blocked out. The guy doesn't even talk about Bill Clinton. It was expected that the whole the whole story was bullshit. So here's here's Jason Goodman in his own words. And true pundit Michael Moore, his real name is Michael Moore. He goes by the name of Thomas Paine. He publishes under true pundit. A little bit delayed tonight, just getting everything in order to be able to properly release this video. And uh, everyone's going to be seeing it for the first time along with me. And uh, we've got just about... So, so here goes, the, here goes the, the cash game. True pundit... If you want to see it at True Pundit, uh, whatever, True Pundit Patreon, I think it's like 8 or $9. If you want to see it at, at, at Jason's site, it's $2. So it's like a, they're, they're, they're presenting it like a movie. Rather than take the evidence and go to the FBI with it, because the they've already tried that, and it's, it's frivolous information. All right, so instead, now they're going to try to cash in on it and run the conspiracy. And, and not only that, they're going to turn the conspiracy on me. All right? They're going to try to say that I'm disrupting me personally for investigating the Jen Moore case. They're now taking the Epstein issue, right? Our interactions at the Epstein trial and trying to tag it onto Jen Moore's back. The reason why, right, not that Jason Goodman uh, assaulted me uh, uh, two days ago with an umbrella, but because I'm following him to stop the evidence of Jen Moore from coming out. It's, I mean, if you, if you really believe that, if you're a crowdsourced, a truth person, and you really believe that, you got a real problem, right? You should guys should get together, for, crowdsource your own mental health because it is so ridiculous. So listen to, listen to Goodman uh, in his own words. 
five minutes to go, so I hope that people will make their way over to Patreon. This is a very good way for us to avoid the censorship that's happening on YouTube, the social engineering attacks that are happening on YouTube. So he's 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 implying that the social he he's on this this uh, notion of social media attacks that everybody's conspiring against him to stop him from from doing his very very important work of bullshitting the public. Uh, he's being exposed is what's happening and he's they, they cover this is how they cover. Um, and also why what do you mean that YouTube doesn't want to see a video a very important video of someone. Uh, so, so very, very newsable item. Put it out already. Why are you sitting on it for a year, Thomas Paine? YouTube. And Mike, this story has subjected both you and I to social engineering attacks. It happened yesterday on the street. So there's cyber stalking, there's stalking in real life, accosting me on the street, calling me names, coming up to me, antagonizing me. There's people who don't want this information out. That's the way it is. Welcome to journalism. Welcome to 2019. That's right. the way these people are out of control. People are talking uh, about James Comey's daughter. So you see, you see the, the, the conspiracy. The conspiracy is that, again, Jason Goodman the other day assaulted me with, a, with an umbrella for saying hello to him. Right? And now what he's trying to do is they're spinning the story to say that I was trying to interfere with him and his 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 work with Jen Moore. The two things had nothing have nothing. There's no connection to the two other than Epstein's a pedophile, and Bill Clinton is an alleged pedophile. But there's no there's no real connection, right? And you see, true pundit Michael Moore, Thomas Paine, he he corroborates the conspiracy against me. It's really crazy. So here's what actually happened yesterday. I published a full video on it. You're, you're free to watch it. Who's going to pay who? Who's going to frame who? I'm walking along. I'm doing my, my show down by the court covering the Jeffrey Epstein case. It had nothing to do with anything that... I haven't spoke to Jason Goodman in, 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 in years, literally. I've never... I've only been... Well, that's a long story, but I've never actually spoken to him. So I'm, I'm walking along doing my show and he assaults me. Who? Now you got James Comey's daughter? Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, look, it's Jason Goodman. It's Jason Goodman, everybody. Hey, Jason. Look at shit. Sorry. <laughs> it's Jason Goodman attacking me with an umbrella. Right? Wait a faggot. So I, I trigger him and... <laughs> we got him. We have triggered. We have triggered him. I don't know. I just said hello to you. You said, hey, faggot is what I I said hello to you. Yeah. Now I said, now I said, hey, faggot. So, so there's the interaction. It was, it was comical, but it was actually rather dangerous. He stuck an umbrella. He tried to destroy the equipment. So, and this, this is who the guy is. The guy is hostile. He's walking around with this for two years. Here's where, here's where it becomes guilt, right? What is he guilty of? Because I tried to expose the Jen Moore case to actually look at the details and not just try to pin it on some distant politician, but look at what actually happened in the case, right? Now, that's, that's yesterday or two days ago, right? Jason Goodman uh, lashing out and now saying that he, he attacks me on the street and now he's whipping it into I'm stalking, I'm some kind of cyber stalker. It's really, really fucking sick if you think about it. So what is my relationship to True Pundit? I, I do have a relationship as early as November 2018. I reached out to Thomas Paine, Michael Moore, November 23rd, 2018, in an email, and I said, I would like to discuss your views on the latest developments of the Jen Moore mystery. I know you had covered the case in the past 10, 15 minutes on the phone, right? Um, so, so then he answers, normally in journalism, you ask someone for their views before you slam them with baseless allegations. You missed your window. I do not appreciate allegations that the Bill Clinton alleged victim does not exist. That calls my credibility into question, and more importantly, Jen Moore's credibility as well. Perhaps I will, leave, I will release the video. Stay tuned. So I say, yeah, great, thanks. So he comes back and says, perhaps if you give me more notice, we can do something. Right? So he's treated, you know, I ask him, I, if, if, you, if you want to defend your record, then let's defend your record. Let's talk about it. All right, so... So, so I tell him, I, I basically tell him, fuck off. I say, honestly, Thomas, I think you're full of shit, 
but uh, about the boy, uh, and that's precisely how I will proceed until proven otherwise. You and Goodman got so taken in by Webb and his bullshit, and I called Jenny, I don't know, Junkie Jenny and Alcohol George show. I'm provoking him. I'm trying to get a response out of him. They sold you a fake story, uh, but go right down, uh, right, right ahead and do that, right? So actually, pundits sold, it, it turns out that Thomas sold these guys the story. Right, with this, with this Jenny Moore thing. And again, we're going to get to it. I know it's going to be a long video. Uh, so, um, so that's my relationship. Uh, I tell him fuck off, and 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 we never did the interview. Right. So, who is True Pundit? Let's look at True Pundit. Right. So here's an article published by BuzzFeed back uh, about a year ago when they exposed True Pundit. He was running around with a fake name. He was Thomas Paine, and we found out who he was. He he p- pretended to be deeply connected to the FBI. He was, uh, he had, he had a staff of, of, uh, you know, informants inside and outside of the FBI. He presented himself like a big organization, but really what it turns out to be is his name is Michael Moore. He's a convicted felon for, for pirating hockey videos. He has absolutely no connection to, to, to deep state or FBI or law enforcement. His only contact with FBI was being indicted for burning hockey videos. I'll show you the indictment. So here is, here's how, here's BuzzFeed covering Thomas Paine. Uh, notorious pro-Trump misinformation site, True Pundit, is run by ex-journalists with a grudge against the FBI. Oh, I thought he was, uh, he was, he was in, in bed with the FBI. All his information was coming for the FBI. So the way he operated up until he was exposed is that he would say that he had the... The, as true pundit, my sources inside the FBI. But meanwhile, most of it he was just making up or stretching the truth. And and this article, if you want to read it, here it is. Go BuzzFeed, true pundit, uh, BuzzFeed News, true pundit. You could read it for yourself. And it it talks about all of the uh, the ways in which he's you know has has built his following and made uh, gross um, gross mi- misrepresentations of the truth. Right? And, and caught all along the way, right? So, I, you know, I don't follow all these stories. It actually kind of bores me. Um, but um, so it talks about uh, Payne really be perhaps the best sourced reporter in America when it comes to big cases being investigated by the FBI and NYPD or other agencies. Is he someone, is he someone federal agents would leak in, incredibly sensitive information to? <laughs> no. Right? So, so he also claimed to have won a Loeb Award, which was, was false. He claims to have been, there's a, there's a ton of allegations that he's made that proved to be false. You could read the article for yourself. Um, so Moore also has a connection to, his connection to the FBI that it can, could explain uh, true pundits' fixation with the agency. He was arrested by federal agents in November 2011 for running two websites that sold pirated hockey DVDs and downloads. Months earlier, FBI agents executed a search warrant on his home and carted off the equipment he used to pirate hockey games and other content. Here's the, here's the indictment. Uh, so here you go. Here's the, here's the case number if you want to look it up. Where is it? Uh, there's the case number. Uh, you can drop that into Google and find the case for yourself. So here it is, United States versus Michael Moore. And it talks about his indictment um, for these hockey videos. What was the consequence? He pleaded guilty to one count of copyright infringement in June 2013. He was sentenced, sentenced to time served uh, of one day in prison, a year of house arrest, and three years of supervised release. Uh, so he, he got, he got kind of slammed for that, right? A year of house arrest and three years of supervised release. During his release, he had a, uh, uh, to provide monthly income statements and facilitate the investigation. So he's under, he's a guy, he's not working with the FBI. He's working with the FBI because he's a convicted pirate, you know, pirater. Right? So that's the indictment. So now, now let's talk about something else. Let's get into Jenny Moore, the autopsy. And that stuff as well. So here is, those are the players, right? But we have to go one step further. There's another player, George Webb. So the story of Jen Moore starts 
in in the, in the bowels of of uh, True Pundit. True Pundit says that Jen Moore came to him with this story. Michael Moore then works with. They're working together as a source, and they get this interview with the boy. Right. That's that's the that's the bullsh- That's the story. Right. Now, there's also the other thing, the mystery of, of Jenny Moore and Task Force. I don't know her work. I don't follow her work. You could, if you want to follow her work, uh, you know, you could go online and follow it yourself. There's all kinds of, uh, there's all it, you could Google, um, I'm sorry, YouTube Task Force, and you'll find all of her uh, uh, videos, right? But here's one special. There's the, the allegation that somehow that um, I think it was Jason Goodman, um, and I'm going to tell you why Jason Goodman is suspect number one in a second. I haven't said it yet. I, I remember, I realize I haven't said it yet, but the, his, his, his aggression on innocent bystanders, people involved in the story, is, is now very suspicious that he's drawn to violence by a simple hello or something. So I'll just put it out there. Jason Goodman was in Washington, D.C. the night that Jenny Moore died. Now, was Jenny Moore murdered? Is there evidence of a murder? Not really, but there is evidence of Jenny Moore being roughed up or and or falling down at some point. Now, when you look at Jason Goodman's behavior, his, his willingness to strike out at people, he could have been the guy that roughed up Jen Moore. And why would he do that? Because Jenny Moore loved this guy. Jenny Moore loved Jason Good, uh, loved George Webb. Jenny Moore lived in the hotel with George, drove George around, bought, bought George lunch, right? She was George's chauffeur. She was George's cameraman, right? Well, not cameraman, but she was there. She was with him on a daily basis for many months, right? And, um, and in my, my estimation is that Jenny Moore liked and or loved George, and George maybe liked her, maybe stuck it in there a couple of times. I don't know, right? But George also had a, 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 another girlfriend. We'll look at some pictures too, right? So, so, so listen to this. This is, this is George Webb. Who doxed Jen Moore? That's the story, right? Who put Jen Moore's face on the record, right? Because she's first, up to this point, she was, you know, anonymous. She had her face off of the, uh, off the record, right? So the, 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 the now the speculation is that Jen Moore was doxxed one month before her death. That's factually incorrect. All these players are wearing coats. So hang in there. We bang, are going to get... Bang. You see that? This is George Webb's video, right? George Webb's video of Jenny Moore, right? Just look at this first. Right? Okay, it's, it's day 54. Uh, this is part seven. So I'm here with an FBI whistleblower. And you meet the best people when you come to these FBI uh, things on Hi. on the Hill. Alex. Everybody wearing coats, right? She dies in August. They're wearing coats. So you have to you have to say that this video occurred sometime in March, maybe January, February, March, April when it was cold. It didn't happen in July, all right? So she so George Webb docks Jenny Moore, just for the record. Not that it matters. This this idea only feeds the conspiracy that. Because her face was on the record, then the Bill Clinton people attacked her. It's, the, the idea is, it's just ridiculous, right? It doesn't hold up. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, so this is Alex, and Alex, uh, we're going to so, get you some... Uh, so here's where he exposes this. Yeah, 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 okay, we're not going to talk about it. There's charts, this is publicly available information. There, I published the T-chart, look on my Twitter. So, hang in there. We are going to get you some right there. Uh, voice here in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Tell, tell Chief Newsham of the police... I met him twice. I did already. Right. Went so and here, and then, yeah, you also hear Jen Moore asking this guy's question. So you get to hear her voice in this video, too. He said they turned around and tried to set you up, right? With uh, year, year, uh, Years later, I would say, I was facing NSIS down there yeah. when I came up here to... I have no idea who this guy is. I don't care. He's not, he's not part of the story. New York and D.C., yeah. it was the FBI now. Right. So now the, you're basically trying to get the FBI to stop the corruption, and then they turn it around on you and try to entrap you yes. with... Uh, so that's the voice of Jen Moore. Let's watch the video one more time where George exposes Jen Moore. So, hang in there. We Bang, are going right to get there. you some uh, voice here in Washington, D.C. Okay. Confirmed. George Webb exposes Jen Moore, her face, her visual, 
wearing a jacket can't be July unless it's uh, you're wearing a jacket in July in 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 uh, in Washington D.C. It ain't gonna happen. It's cold out, right? They got they got the guy's got a scarf on a hat. They're cold. I said it bundled up, hands in the pocket. Tells you that that the the time of Jenny Moore being exposed to the public, and the idea to first of all, if the idea that if the NSA or deep state people, deep state hacks, really wanted to find out who Jenny Moore was. It wouldn't be hard to do, right? So let's look at some of, now we're going to look at the autopsy. So this is Dr. John. Dr. John is my friend uh, and, and also someone who is in the comments from the, at that time and still in the comments now uh, following these stories. And Jen, um, Dr. John uh, was was gracious enough. She is a uh, an aut- uh, autopsy doctor, a doctor who has done this sort of work. And when I got the the um, the Jen Moore autopsy, I had sent it to her, and she I didn't send it to her. I put it out on on the uh, on a video, and she analyzed it and got back to me on it. And we'll go, we'll talk about her analysis, right? So this is uh this is what I thought she looked like. A man, is she she's hot, man. She took his dope. Uh, she's really, she's really a uh, really beautiful, really beautiful, be- be- fucking hot man. This girl's dynamite, man. This is, this is fucking, I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Come on, man, you're killing me." Uh, so, but anyway, she's she's she, she's really very smart and very helpful, and she is in the comments. So if you comment, she will see it. So this is her work. Uh, she what she did was she analyzed the autopsy for us. And she gave a, a graphic, a, vid, a visual graphic in, term, in, a, in, in a, a drawing form to tell us what, what the condition of the body was. This is another one, too. This tells you that, the, that uh, Jenny Moore was, in fact, a cop at one point in Tracy Police Department. Again, it's irrelevant to the story what, what she did beforehand. Right? I, I don't really care about that. But here's the, here's the front version, and you could see the, all the abrasions, black as surgical scars, uh, I, you know, these are, these are, uh, contusions, right? So abrasions, elbow, you look at this area. We'll look, we'll come back to this in a second. I just want you to see the autopsy and we'll, right? And there's the back, right? All right so here's the autopsy. I'll go, I'm going to click through it page by page. So if you want to read it yourself, this is page one. You could stop the frame. This is page two. You could stop the frame. Here's page three, stop the frame. Page four, stop the frame. Page five, this is the toxicology, stop the frame. Page six, this is the postal mark. Okay, I got two of those, I don't know why. All right, so that's Jen Moore. We know, we confirmed that's her face, right? Here's the, here's the released, uh, you know, photos with, with, um, uh, here she is with uh, another character, uh, Robin Gritz, we're not going to talk about her. This is suspect number one, right? Why? Because he was in D.C., right? And, and again, my speculation that he's homosexual is not a joke, right? It is, it is part and parcel to the story because Jason Goodman probably had an attraction, a kind of a femme fatale attraction to George Webb. Now, I know it seems ridiculous, and I know, I know it's, it's almost kind of comical, but there is truth to the story that that task force loved George. Go, uh, uh, Goodman also loved George and wanted to steer George in his direction because he's a very possessive, dangerous, violent character, wanted to, to own George. So there was a power struggle over George, right, who also had another girlfriend who is, is a very... Uh, sketchy character and the fact that this guy George uh, Jason Goodman was in DC the night of Jen Moore's uh, uh, death is highly suspicious right. let me um, okay my, my shit just crashed let me get to the next picture where's the next picture come on, come on baby come on baby don't fail me now so let's go here huh How come I can't go forward? I'm trying to get, let me just uh, start over. Let's see, it's here. So where are we? So yeah, so here is Goodman. Here's the conspiracy theory on True Pundit. His relationship, this is George Webb. 
here's the girlfriend that George was uh, apparently the night of Jen Moore's death. This woman, uh, Corina, Corina, I don't know what her name is, Elizabeth or something, doesn't matter, was in the room. Is she a possible suspect in it? At one point she was, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she beat the shit out of Jenny Moore, but the point is somebody kicked the shit out of Jenny Moore. It looks like, right? And she, she had an a opioid uh, habit and likely died. That's manslaughter. That's not murder. That's manslaughter. That's not off the table. So here's George Webb and his girlfriend. Here's the relationship with the long relationship with Jason Goodman and True Pundin, Pundin pumping the story. Right. So let's go back to the, to the autopsies and we'll look at it. So again, it's very involved. It's very detailed about the, the, the uh, condition of Jen Moore's body at the time. All right, but let's, look at, let's just look at the summation. Some of the summations, uh, alcoholism history, pacemaker, obesity, uh, it doesn't talk about drug addiction, but here is the pharmacology, and you could see right here, tests positive urine for oxycotton, uh, oxycodone, 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 right? And a combination of other drugs. These are, some of these are over the counter. Oxycodone in the liver, in the blood, heart blood, urine, right? Testing positive, not a very high number, 0.6 millile- milligrams per liter, that is not really a toxic level where somebody murdered you with a, with a fentanyl patch or something. But it is, it is, and I told the story in another video about my cat who was very, in very bad shape. Jen Moore had an enlarged heart. She had a pacemaker. She had chronic alcoholism. She was probably drinking on top of it. I don't see any positive for alcohol. But nonetheless, the diagnoses of uh, alcoholism exist. So... So, so my cat was very weak, and I brought the cat to the vet. And I asked the vet, can you kindly give the, the cat a little narcotic just to ease the pain? And he said, no, when, some, when, some, when a cat or you know, a, a being is in such bad shape, if you give them narcotics, you can stop their heart. So the point is that 0.6 milligrams per liter, and people disagreed with me on this, but I'll, st- I'll stay to it. I also have a medical background. I was a clinical clinical dietitian for many years. I worked in hospitals. I know what I'm looking at most of the time. So two, so 0.6 milligrams per liter indicates a, a use, an opioid a, a, a use. All right, that is confirmed. That is confirmed. I don't know why this keeps sticking like this. i to keep opening again. So there's page one, right? So now let's look at the, let's look at the the, let's look at the actual photographs and see what we see, right? So here's, here's the front version, right? Again, liqu- lividity, I don't know what that is. I think it's liquids. Abrasions, look at the pink, abrasion. Look at the, look at the right arm, abrasions, abrasions. Blue is contusions, right? Old, old abrasions, right? Feet, why are feet are abrased? I don't know, but surgical scars, scar, scar, scar. She had a pacemaker, scar, scars, scars all over the place. The elements of cutting, elements of perhaps cutting oneself, very unusual, p- possible tracks, possible uh, abuse. I don't know for sure, but there's a lot, a lot of cuts and bring, bangs. And uh, the lower lip had an abrasion. Did she fall? This is reminiscent of someone falling on their elbow. It's also a defensive wound. When someone attacks you, you throw up your arm and, and your arm takes the hit. So we have evidence of possible defensive wounds, um, possibly just being strung out and falling down. It was hot in D.C. at the time. Again, it's August. It's hot. It could be 80, 90, 100 degrees out. Uh, so that's the, and then in the back, you got the same story, right? Now, there was this business of she had back plates and all that. There was no evidence in the autopsy, nothing in the autopsy that she had plates in her back. There was some sort of back surgery and little ball joints that were inside of her backbone. And uh, Dr. John has informed me that those are not something that an autopsy would reveal because they're, they're implanted inside of the spine and then they, they, kind, of, um, they kind of cover up. They, they, uh, they, you know, bone grows around the little ball joint, so you wouldn't even see it in an autopsy unless you were looking for it. Right? And there was no reason to look for it. So again, lots of abrasions, lots of scars. All right, so so that's the that's the um, that's basically the background of this thing. 
right? I know that was a lot. It's a lot to absorb, right? But the idea that that um, the the new development is is enemy number one right here because, as I said, right, the man with the pink umbrella, this guy right here, and it ain't funny anymore, right? This guy is is probably suspect number one in the manslaughter, in showing up at the hotel, get rough, running into Jen Moore, as he does, right? He's, he's, ab he's abusive, right? He, uh, come here, talk to me. Come here, come here. Right? He's, a, he's, a, he's an obsessive, uh, at this point, a little dangerous kind of guy, right? Sweaty, got, you know, angry. He seems a little jacked up on something. I don't know. It's just my thought. I see late video of him jacked up. Uh, maybe he's maybe he's high on something, but the idea that he could have run into Jen Moore and and you know beat her that night is very possible. There is coincidence. There's another incident. Well, the door was unlocked. Well, I, I don't know about that. Sometimes you just forget to lock your door. I don't forget to lock my door because you know even if I do forget to lock my door, you got a lot of you know. Oh shit! Damn. Marcus Conte reporting. Marcus Conte reporting. Oh, damn. 